Hi, I'm Mike Miller. Hope you're having a great day. Thanks so much for watching The Other Side. We're glad to be here today. My guest is a guitar player, composer, lyricist, singer, and I've been seeing him around performing in the Denton area, and I'm glad to have James McFadden here today. I appreciate hey, thank you very much for having me on. It's great to be here. It's love it. I really like your songs. Thank you. All right. You've got a good sound. You, you said you like Pink Floyd? Yeah, I really, I, when I was younger, uh, I actually, the first Pink Floyd song I ever learned how to play was Wish You Were Here. My sister asked me to like oh, learn yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And at the time I really wasn't all that familiar, but I'm like, oh, okay, Pink Floyd. And as I got older, I kind of got a little bit more into them. Yeah, how and, old were you uh, then? I want to say like 17 or 16. Yeah. When and did you get your first guitar? Uh, I must have been like 15 years old. Yeah. And uh, I, this kid I knew in, on the bus uh, was playing guitar, and I'm like, that's cool, I'm getting a guitar too. He had this like really nice Les Paul, I was, I was oh, yeah. like jealous of him, he's like, it's a great guitar. He had that on the school bus? No, 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 but oh. he showed it to me, I'm like, oh, I yeah. want one. So and what kind did you get? My first guitar was a Strat copy made by, it was called a Stinger. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 And uh, I don't have it anymore. It's lost to time, but yeah, uh, I still remember it. So, still kind of wish that I still had it. Yeah. Got you going. It, it, it did. It did. I uh, remember the first things I ever learned, like really like struggled to learn on guitar was the intro riff to Sweet Child of Mine. Really? And I mean, I practiced that for like weeks and weeks, and I finally got it perfect. And I was just like playing it all the time. Yeah. And people, would, my my buddy would be like, "Dude, stop playing that. Just just don't 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 play that anymore." And it was what's like, it, "What's that guy's name? Slash?" Yeah. 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 Who composed that? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, it, but that's uh, that that was actually I think the song that really I think pushed me to want to play guitar. Yeah. You like those. That the feeling in that uh, lick or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it they just worked. sounded cool, you know. Yeah, I don't know where they came from, but they were a good band. Yeah, they were. I wish they were. Kind of wish that they were. Well, I guess they are still together, aren't they? I guess I don't know, but uh, who is the singer? Uh, Axl Rose. Yeah, yeah. He's he put on a few pounds. He has. He he he, he has. He's. I, I I guess he gets like plenty of exercise running around on stage. You know, he actually took over singing for ACDC. It's kind of cool. Did he? Yeah, he did. Which one of them died? The first singer. The first singer? Yeah. Did one of the guitar players die? Actually, no, actually a couple of them have like passed away in passed recent away. years, I think, yeah. 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 Um, one of them, um, Angus Young's brother, I think it was him, he actually died from Alzheimer's. Oh, really? Yeah, that's a terrible way to go, isn't it? It is, yeah. They weren't able to tour the last year, I heard, because of yeah. before he passed. but. They put out some great music that influenced a lot of people. Yeah, and, it's, and you know they're just—they're like one of those bands where if you don't like ACDC, you know, I think there's something wrong with that with person who doesn't like ACDC. They're just like one of those great bands. It's kind of like you know I don't trust somebody who doesn't like Johnny Cash. Well, ACDC I think was kind of a guy band though. Some women might not like ACDC as much as guys like that kind of music. Oh, maybe. <laughs> and like Billy Joel, he wrote songs for women, it seemed like. Well, ACDC kind of like, well, no, actually they wrote songs about women. It's not really the same thing, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know for sure, but I always liked their, the way they pr produced. Uh, who was that guy, Mute Lang, that produced ACDC in Nashville, actually? I, I, I'm guilty of really not having any, any knowledge of who, like, produced anything, like, anywhere except for the person, the guy who, like, produced the Beatles album, so. Yeah, who was that? You know, um, I cannot remember now <laughs> because you asked me that question. George Martin. Yes. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But uh, when did you write your first songs, though? Well, I wrote my. I, I mean, I was trying to like write songs all through high school, but they sound like bad uh, poetry. You were, you were learning how to put lyrics together and yeah. the meter and things like that. Yeah, well, just learning how to. I mean, it's like I, I always liked coming up with like new song ideas, but I was never like really good at lyrical composition, I guess you would say. And then sometime in like late '92, I guess, 
uh, I, I, I finally got the knack, I guess you could say. Yeah. And uh, I didn't. I, I've actually played that one of those songs that I first started writing um, back then uh, on uh, open mics. It's uh, and uh, I, I, I haven't done that song in years, but it's called Round and Round. And I kind of wish I'd done it uh, today, but um, you know, yeah, I think you've heard me play it before. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that's was like one of the. I think that like actually was like the first song that I wrote where. I actually felt like, hey, I might actually not be too bad at this. Yeah. And uh, that, that um, I guess having that confidence of like being like, being proud of something that you've written and not looking at something and saying, be like, oh Lord, this is atrocious. I'm gonna set it on fire. You know, burn the house down, it's that bad. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's what it was like around like 92, like late 92, like I'd say, um, I want to say October or so. Yeah. October of 92 and, uh, but yeah, I've been writing off and on ever since. Do you do computer related work? Uh, for a living? Yeah. <laughs> I actually work uh, doing technical support for um, Brings Home Security. People call me and tell me that their alarm system is doing oh, stuff that, and that, I help, yeah. them, help them fix Tr it. Troubleshoot and things like that. Yeah, yeah. and I find that pretty rewarding just because I, I did do tech support for Verizon Fios, and I wasn't happy with that because it's really hard to feel any kind of uh, sense of importance about somebody's cable TV not working. Really? You, people get really upset. I remember one time this woman, it was like the first few months that I was there, this woman calls in, and we couldn't get her cable to, to work, and and tell her, well, ma'am, it's going to be a few days before we can get somebody out there. And I tell her it's like it was going to be like the middle of next week, and she's getting upset. She's like, what are my kids going to do? Because the TV was out. I'm just fighting back the earth to say you can always, I don't know, spend quality time with them, read, read to them, you know. <laughs> so, it, Did you tell her that, or no, you weren't allowed to? No, yeah. no, 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 no. No, I, I, there's so many things when you do customer tech support that, is important to like be able to do, be patient, um, but being able to not be a smart ass is really, really super important. Yeah, so that'd be the hardest part for me, yeah. Yeah, but uh, no, I, I, I like doing tech support for alarm systems because you appreciate the importance of a person's home being secure. Yeah. You know, so I put a little bit more heart into it, I guess you could say. Yeah, well that makes sense, rather than just their entertainment. Yeah. Yeah, because there's so many other sources of entertainment for sure. But, uh, so, but yeah, that's that's what I do. <laughs> that's great. Do you sometimes have creative ideas come to you while you're at work or like in stressful situations? Most of the times when I have like a really good idea, it's like usually when I'm driving. Really? Yeah. When, I, when I'm at work, too much of my mental energy is de yeah, devoted focused on to, that. Yeah. to like doing what I'm doing on the call. I used to deliver pizzas. Really? And I would get like song ideas in my head like all the time just because when, when you're driving you're just kind of like, oh no, you start like coming up with like ideas. I was like on the way over here and um, I have this like new new song that I'm working on. Today? Yeah, and um, I had this, like I came up with the, the guitar part a couple of days ago and um, I'm sitting there in the car, like singing lyrics to myself, like coming up with ideas. I'm like, I'm not going to remember like any of this. So it's usually when I'm creating ideas, I'm nowadays I'm on my computer at home with a microphone turned on. Yeah. And can capture it. And I can capture it, um, and it's a little bit easier. Yeah. To, to do it that way and go back and like piece together what, what you did, you know. Years ago, when I was like writing, I didn't have like a, a, a anything to record with. Yeah. So I come up with, like lyrics. I'd like write it down to, to, to be like kind of like religious about it, fanatical about it. But and then I like come up with like a piece of music. And sometimes you know you come up with like lyrics specifically for the music, or with uh, come up with like words one time and then, like music another time. You like combine them. It's like these might fit together. But uh, the um, when you're recording and coming up with ideas, the 
you're basically creating the lyrics mainly just for the music. Yeah. And I think you can come up with like lyrics with like an intent, so you kind of like slowly like it's kind of like making like a sandcastle, I guess you mm -hmm. could say. Yeah. It's like you just kind of like build slowly and slowly, and then finally it looks like something you recognize. Yeah. And uh, yeah. <laughs> that's good though that you've analyzed that process that's going on like that. Yeah, yeah it's. Uh, Some I, people think they can't write songs, but you can. You can learn and learn how to be receptive to things that come to you. I think. Yeah, um, I went through a period of about four or five years where I wasn't even playing. Yeah. And so the last couple of years, getting back into to playing. And now actually like recording and coming out to the open mics again. Yeah. It feels like I come out of a, a cave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and got the beard to prove it. <laughs> I do appreciate you coming down today and I want to go ahead and conclude and, and let let you play some music for us. And all right. You guys stay tuned to check out James music and thank you so much for watching. Hey, my name's James uh the I'm gonna do a few songs for y'all. This one is called Check Your Thrills. Check your thrills, check your thrills, check your thrills, check your thrills. Well, I raise my glass. Right back at me Skin is in my closet Come back for more I guess there's more than one thing That I'm good for Tell my honey now Where have you been? I got hands full of love And heart full of sin Now I know how a good time feels So you can keep your honey Check your friends Check your thrills Check your thrills Check your thrills Check them now the blood of Christ you got the blood of sin it's coming back to me now we're gonna do it again skeletons in my clue don't call me no more guess it's more than one thing that I ain't good for cats in heat and the dogs run away ain't no more that I can say been a long time since I realized that you don't really know what's behind your eyes. Now I know what's really real, so you can keep your honey. Check your thrills. Check your thrills. Check your thrills. Check your thrills.
Thank you. I guess I didn't need to say thank you. I'm not in front of an audience. <laughs> uh, this one is, uh, this next one is called uh, Abusing My Joy. That's a happy song. Uh, this next one that I'm going to do is called um, Requiem for a Rainy Day. I just want to say tune. Stars in the sky came out to play. One of them fell to earth, and she became a rainy day. And I don't want to see a sky that's blue. Rainy days are the best days, and even everybody knows it's true. Don't want to say a word Don't want to see you drift away I don't want to see you burn Just want to see you shine There's no words I can say The rainbow is the only requiem
And the universe and me, we had some words Said I don't like how you're doing things I really think it's quite absurd And I don't like the way you made the rules well, I think that your rules are cruel The universe laughed and called me a fool I don't want to see you fall Don't want to see you fade Don't want to see you drift away Just want to see you shine Just want to see you blow There's no words I can say So a rainbow is the only requiem for a friend of mine who's uh, not going through good times right now, but uh, I'm going to do a, no, I'm not going to do a happy song, I'm going to do a song called uh, Glad I'm Not God, and I wrote this song years and years and years and years ago, it's kind of the old man of the bunch, these songs that I'm doing today. I had created all of the universe And 
and everything held within. I'd wipe the slate clean of all evil. And all of your cokehead friends, I wish that I was a sailor on an island lost at sea. And I'd be the king of all that I surveyed. But how grand that would be. Aren't you glad I'm not God? Aren't you glad I'm not God? I bet you're glad I'm not God. Best be glad I'm not God. I was God, I would listen to all your prayers Every last single one I'd be an invisible drunk laughing in your face My, wouldn't that be fun? And my God, I would give you everything Everything you've been longing for And I'd make a big pile out of all of it but it on your living room floor Aren't you glad I'm not God? Aren't you glad I'm not God? You must be glad I'm not God. But I count your stars, I'm not God. That is a happy song. Well, it's a happy song that I was writing back then, back in like 97. And, uh, and this last one is called uh, Farewell to Heroes. And uh, again, another happy song. It's really not a happy song. Let me start over. I used to have heroes way back when Before I knew too much But that was way back then I used to have heroes That was long before I knew too much Don't want to know no more I used to have 
some are old and gray some burned out some just faded away well, i used to have heroes some have fallen apart some have fallen from grace some just broke my heart Thank you. 